Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. I caught my husband cheating, but when he tried to frame me in court, I turned the tables. Now, he's lost everything, and I walked away with it all. My husband of five years cheated on me. How did I find out? I walked in on him and his affair partner in our room on our bed. It turns out he had been cheating on me for quite a while. We've had our differences lately, but I never expected that this was the reason. I kicked them both out and contacted a divorce attorney immediately. Before I caught them, I was out on a business trip. It took more time than I expected. I was there for about a month and a half, and I was originally supposed to return 15 days later. If I had, I would have never caught him in the act. My attorney and I were about to send him divorce papers. We shared a lot of property. I could destroy him in court with the proof I had, but he didn't know that. Before we could send him the papers, he had made the first move. He accused me of cheating and denied allegations of cheating on me. He had some type of proof, but I had never cheated on him. My attorney and I discussed our future moves, and we decided to let him drag us to court. Since he had false evidence, he was going to commit perjury. That idiot had no idea that he was going to walk into my trap. The court date was set. His family sided with him and I didn't care. I was enraged, absolutely furious. My anger was boiling within me, but I didn't let it leak. I was going to annihilate him and his posts. My family supported me. I had even tracked down a few of his mistresses. He had no idea. We had a joint account, and I immediately had it frozen the day I caught him. My attorneys made sure nothing was moving from any of our accounts or properties. As I dug in more, I found more evidence. It was very easy to acquire credit details. His credit card for our joint account had multiple expenditures, from designer bags to expensive dinners. I know what evidence he had submitted, and I could easily turn it around. There were pictures of me and my new business partner having dinner and then going up. We had gone up to one of the private meeting places where the rest of our partners would join us. My husband wasn't aware of my recent business dealings. The business meeting had taken about three hours. I bet he thought that my walking out with my business partner that late would be enough proof. The court date arrived. The hearing started. He presented his evidence. My lawyers took over and presented ours. I had asked my business partners, including my new one, to be witnesses. One of them owned the hotel we were at and provided pictures of all of us leaving it a few minutes after each other. He, my husband, had forged a few pictures of me and my other associates, and I could easily prove that it wasn't me as I had been in multiple meetings around that time. I had my travel and meeting schedules with me. He was nervous at this point. I noticed his little habit of fidgeting when things don't go his way. Then my evidence was presented. I presented the credit card records first. Then I had messages from the women he had slept with. He shouldn't have left his home laptop at the house. His lawyers thought that was it. But then my team went in for the kill. Before leaving, I had set up a new security system. Cameras were set up all around my house to make sure they were working, I set one up in my room, and I forgot to set it up somewhere else before leaving. Thank God I had forgotten. The camera was set up two days before I left on my trip. His lawyers tried to make it look like I was spying on him, but I had the security person on a video call explaining that he had asked me to do that. The recording showed my husband bringing multiple women into our house. At first, I thought it was only one, but he had over 10 women over at the house while I was gone. I looked at his family, and they sat there in disbelief. Their son had committed perjury, providing false evidence and testimony and falsely accusing me. His whole team was doomed. And they knew it. At the end of the hearing, I won. I watched his face as the judge gave the verdict in my favor. His face when he realized he had lost it all. It was so satisfying. He looked at me, and I smirked at him and walked out. Everything was mine now. He was going to serve jail time and pay a huge fine. He had dug his grave, and I was more than happy to bury him in it. Over the next few days, my lawyers sorted out all of my documents and property papers. I made sure his expenses were put on him. The joint account was mine now, and I wasn't going to pay his expenses. His family tried contacting me, and I had my lawyers handle them. If they had anything to say, they could contact my lawyers. I wasn't going to give that a whole or his family a penny. My parents understood my rage. His betrayal had made me ruthless. He not only cheated on me, but also tried to steal everything from me. His reputation was crushed. I made sure the news reached all of his partners and the rest of his family. The MF deserved it. Update 1, two months later. It has been two months, a day ago. I broke down crying. From the time he cheated on me until now, this was the first time I cried. It was raw and painful. It hurt like a bitch. I didn't cry when I walked in on them. I didn't shed a tear, but now, after everything that happened, I feel drained. I loved him, past tense. I was in love with him. I didn't think he would turn out to be such a cruel person. I guess it goes both ways. I didn't think I could ever be this ruthless towards him or his family.
but I knew I needed to be. I'm going to go to therapy so I can move past this. I don't want to live my life stuck in a loop. It was time to move past this anger and this pain. He is in jail, by the way. I haven't contacted him or his family. He had tried to contact me. Who knows why? I decided to cut off all of them before the hearing, and I've stuck to that. My family is very supportive. I'm grateful for my business partners, too. I had a lot of help and support from them during this time. Update 2, one month later. Some of you have asked me questions about the division of assets. I cannot give you a proper answer to that. My attorneys helped me handle everything related to our assets. They helped me list them, and they made sure everything was in proper order. What I can tell you is that you have to be careful with this. You cannot go to court and then say you forgot about a certain property or necklace, etc. They could charge you for that. I cannot give details on my ex-husband's sentence either, but he is going to be in there for a while. The ex-husband is in a hole. He freaking cheated on her with multiple women. WTF? And then he accused her of cheating on him. What was this a whole thinking? People like him should rot in jail. OP served him cold. Cold revenge and I'm here for it. I'm glad she wasn't some naive fool who didn't know what to do or didn't want to hurt anybody. Those types of people have everybody walk all over them and then ask God why this happened because you let it happen, fools. I used to be that type of person, so this is personal. Thank you for listening to me vent. She got everything, and that idiot left his laptop at home. Bloody man whore. Those messages would have been enough to prove OP's point. He was one of the worst types of people. He tried to take everything from her after wronging her. Sick, manipulative, sadistic a whole. The audacity he had to smirk at OP. I bet he wouldn't last a second alone with her. His little gang of lawyers wasn't able to save his ass. OP's ex-husband's whole family are the a-holes. They were in on it for sure. I would have paid money to see those a-holes go down. That is why being aware of everything, even if you're at your worst and overwhelmed by emotions, it is important. OP's decision to freeze all the accounts was key to all of this. He could have emptied the accounts of all the money and she would have been left with nothing. I bet he was still with his mistress for the night. More than 10 women in a month and a half. I'm not one to judge, but while you were married, there has to be something deeply wrong with you to inflict this type of pain on your partner. I don't want to even imagine the type of pain she experienced while looking at the video recordings of her house and her room. She didn't even cry. It must have been so numbing. She has finally let all her emotions out, and I pray she recovers her strength to move on. Next story. We have separate finances and bank accounts, so no, he isn't spending my money, but he 100% would if I let him. He is a damn good guy. The only problem is financial, which is huge in my eyes. I want to save money and better our future. He, on the other hand, thinks I'm too concerned with money that we could just earn back. Often says that money holds nothing to being able to experience certain things. Therefore, he is terrible with money because he doesn't see anything as a big deal. I have had several conversations with him regarding his spending habits and it falls on deaf ears. He just tells me to live a little and to treat myself with material items that I have no use for. He has a habit of going shopping just because, buying random things and then never even taking them out of the package. Losing said item and then going back to the store for the same item months later because he can't find the original thing he bought. He also has a habit of buying things that he thinks would be useful which turn out to never be useful. He never takes my advice either. Like fans. He wanted a garage fan which I understood completely. We go and I tell him which one he should get and he ignores it and gets a much smaller one. The next day he went and bought the one I told him to get in the first place and never returned the other one. So, over $300 for two fans. Or he went and bought some RAM for his computer and got the most expensive one he could for no reason because he hardly uses it. Realized he bought the wrong one, so he bought another one and never returned the original BL. He see might need it later. Well, yesterday he came home with like four bags of stuff from the store. Like eight things of air in a can, a beatanol torch, a spice rack that he won't need, camping chairs, a new mop, several dog coats for his dog, a new knife set, etc. You get my point. I just walked past him because I'm admittedly getting pissed and rethinking everything over this spending, and he asks me to come to look at what he got, and I said no. When he asked why, I said because it's just some more stupid purchases, he says I'm an H for ruining his excitement. NTA, I think everyone is missing the part where this is becoming hoarding and is a genuine addiction based on your description. I believe he truly needs therapy, and he should set aside his money each month to afford it. This isn't sustainable. It is affecting your quality of living if you can't even keep a car in the garage. 
Maybe you could get him to agree to a shopping budget monthly that carries over and put the rest into savings. This can be a relationship killer. NTA, the biggest reason people divorce is money. A spender and a saver just do not work immo. He will see you as a spendthrift or penny pincher while you obviously see him as an immature child who can't control his desire to have a new shiny object. Also, it sounds like he has hoarding tendencies which are a pain to deal with. Personally, I'd leave this relationship. You made a comment that it is going to be my money supporting him later in life, and that is absolutely true. He will not get any kind of rush by investing in stocks or an IRA or 401000 so you know he won't. Then you'll be 60 and realize you can't retire because he's bought so much junk over the years that it's worthless. Why should you have to sacrifice your golden years because he can't learn to limit his spending? NTA, he's your fiancé's and you are both presumably planning a life together. If he isn't making sound financial decisions, then it is will be your problem soon. On the assumption he isn't making a load of money and just spending his extra money frivolously on things you don't agree with. However, snide comments clearly won't solve the problem, so you need to sit him down and have a heart-to-heart -heart and come up with a financial plan that works for you both. A joint account where you both save money for big future purposes, a spending budget for fun items at sex. NTAI 56 female met Jeff 58 male my now husband around 30 years ago. We both had sons from previous relationships. Wulio 32 male Jeff's son and Roger 31 male my son. We also have a daughter 27 female. We've always been a regular blended family. My husband treated all our kids equally so did I. Roger calls Jeff dad and Julio calls me mom. As the boys met when they were really young and they always got along well and they even didn't see each other as stepbrothers but brothers. This all changed about 10 years ago. The thing is that Roger had a girlfriend who cheated on him with Julio. They had a huge argument. Roger ended up moving in with his biological dad and basically disowned Julio. He never talked to Julio again. When Roger came to visit, he made sure Julio wasn't here. So no matter how hard Julio and his girlfriend tried to apologize, my son never accepted the apologies. Julio ended up marrying her five years ago and they have a daughter. To show Julio that there are consequences of his actions, so we, my husband and I, banned his wife from our house. Julio understood. A year ago, my son came out and introduced us to his fiance. We welcomed him and let him know we love him to the stars and back. He is going to get married a couple of weeks, but he hasn't invited Julio. Julio was sad when he found out that his brother was getting married and didn't invite him. Julio invited Roger to his wedding. I think that since he was actually gay all this time and never really liked the girl, it wasn't a big deal and also because it happened 10 years ago. He should get over it and enjoy the family and niece he has. We met at a cafe three days ago to talk about the wedding. Thus, I asked him if he changed his mind about inviting his brother. He said no, so I told him to get over himself since that happened 10 years ago and he's only missing a loving brother and a niece. He told me it wasn't my business to say who he can invite or not. He also said that I can attend, but I will no longer walk him down and he asked his dad and my husband instead, which makes me furious since this is my child and my right to walk him down on his special day. My husband accepted an age move if you ask me and said I was TA for forcing things but I'm not. I just want my son to forgive his brother and welcome this new chapter of his life with positive vibes instead of resentment. He didn't even like the girls so it's not a big deal. Now everyone calls me TA even my daughters. So Reddit am I really TA or are they overreacting? Why TA that Roger is gay? Edit should have said non-straight because he may not be gay has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that Julio knowingly stabbed him in the back by screwing his then-partner. Roger will never get over being betrayed by someone he thought he could trust. By pushing it, you are also betraying him. He's an adult who has made his choice, and you are refusing to respect that. If you don't drop the subject entirely and permanently, Roger will cut you out of his life just like he has Julio. YTA. Julio's behavior was unforgivable. That actually means for life. Julio did one of the least brotherly things you can do. Cheat with your brother's girlfriend. Julio and his wife both lack integrity, morals, and values. Julio inviting Roger to the wedding where he married Roger's ex was cold. Not a brotherly gesture. I don't blame him for not attending. Even forgiveness doesn't require Roger to have Julio in his life or at his wedding. I would never trust a Julio again. Ever some damage lasts a lifetime. If ever there was a time for you to stand up for your son, it was this situation. But instead you told him to get over it. You act like Roger caused the rift, not Julio. Roger shouldn't care about Julio's sadness about not being invited. If Roger hasn't spoken to him in 10 years, why would Julio expect an invite? Or is that just a line you used on Roger? If it's true, Bet it didn't hurt as much as having your brother cheat with your girlfriend. Roger doesn't need to get over it. He's moved on and has no room in his life for a person that can look him in the eye, call him brother, and do the most demeaning, disrespectful, and hurtful thing to him. Your husband is right. You pushed. Now you are reaping what you sow.
Funny how Roger is your son when you want to walk him but you steadily trying to make him forgive your stepson. Even Julio's father knew better than that, Ita. Julio betrayed your son in the worst way possible. He did probably the cruelest thing one sibling can do to the other. There are not many people who would be able to forgive Julio, let alone be willing to see him at their wedding. Julio's apologies are pointless. He kept sleeping with her so he couldn't be that sorry. The fact that your son is marrying a man doesn't change Julio's act of betrayal in the slightest. Why would he want the mother who just dismisses the worst thing that ever happened to her son to walk him down the aisle? If you can't stand by him when things are difficult, then you don't get the privilege of walking him down the aisle. Relatedly, your punishment for Julio isn't actually a punishment for Julio. You are shunning his wife, which at most is an inconvenience for him. I don't pretend like this is any kind of meaningful support for your son. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.